So I have here a very simple setup. I have a retort stand and underneath this I'd hang a spring and on the bottom of the spring I'd put a mass. And what I could do is I could change the mass, this is something that I'm in control of, and as we have a different mass we could then see how that affects the time for one oscillation of this spring mass system. Now if we do that what we're going to do is we're going to be in charge of the mass, we're going to control it, and this is our independent variable. So I'm just going to put IV there to be my independent variable. This is what we are deciding to change. As you have a different mass being added, this is going to affect the time t for one oscillation. So the time t is then going to be what we call our dependent variable. And in order to look at the link between the independent and the dependent, we need to make sure that we carry out a fair test. Now a fair test is one in which only this independent variable affects the dependent variable. And if it's only this one thing which is changing, we've then got a very good idea that it's maybe this thing here which affects something else. And in order to do that, what we need to think about are controlling certain parts of our experiment. And we do that by controlling these control variables. So what is a control variable? Well, it's basically a quantity that could vary, but we deliberately keep it constant to make sure that we have this fair test. And so in this example here, there's, uh, you know, we're going to keep the same equipment, but there's other things that we might uh, consider controlling. Perhaps what we might think about is we time the same number of oscillations, because you don't just time one oscillation, you're going to maybe uh, look at the time for maybe 10 oscillations. But you wouldn't do it for 10 oscillations sometimes, you wouldn't then uh, the next time do it for 25, oscilla 25 oscilla oscilla oscillations, sorry that's very hard to say, or maybe just the time for 5. Because the longer this is oscillating up and down, the greater the effect of the damping due to the air and other friction. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that this is something which is the same each time. If you control that, you've got a better chance of getting good results. What else might we want to check? Well, we want to check that this spring has the same spring constant. Now, the spring constant for a spring, uh, or the stiffness, is little k. How do we check that this is constant? Well, what you can do is you can basically uh, look at the extension of this spring as you add different masses, and at the end it should go back to its original length. If there's been some non-elastic, or maybe some plastic deformation, in that case uh, we've maybe gone past the elastic limit or the limit of proportionality, and for that reason, then the, the value of k might change. So maybe what we do is we look at the spring before the experiment. We then uh, maybe look at it halfway through or maybe at the end, just to confirm that this spring is uh, acting in the same way throughout the whole experiment. So things that we need to control also include things like k. But what about the temperature? Does that affect things? Well, yes, it does. You know, metal, when it, uh, it changes its temperature, it's going to, in uh, you know, behave in a different way. And we might do this by just carrying out a very limited amount of experiments. We might just want to check that we're doing everything at uh, the same uh, conditions in the room. But that's not really a big one in this example. Something else we want to make sure is that as we add different masses, and what we do, we hang these on a mass hanger, is we want to make sure that the total surface area of the upper face, which is moving up and down, stays the same. And for that reason, there'd then be a similar amount of air resistance or drag of this mass moving up and down each time. So lots of little things that we need to make sure that we keep the same all the time. And if we control these control variables, that means we've got a higher chance of finding that it's only this independent variable that we've decided to change, which is causing the dependent variable to then change. Now, in this experiment here, uh, there's an equation that says t is equal to 2 pi root m over k, where t is the time period for one oscillation, 2 pi is just 2 pi, We've got the mass which is oscillating and also the, the spring constant or the stiffness of this spring. What that really means then is that basically if we have a bigger and bigger mass, so as m goes up and up, we should find that this takes longer to go up and down. And, you know, we could maybe plot this on a graph where we might say that if we square both sides, we could say that t squared is equal to 4 pi squared m over k. So I've just squared both sides. And that means then that Theoretically, t squared should be proportional to m, because all of these other things here are exactly the same. So maybe we do an experiment, we get some data, and when we plot this data with my independent variable here and my dependent variable here, what we might find is that you get a trend between these two things. Now, if you have a, a fair test, it means our data is both reproducible and repeatable. Now, these sound pretty similar. 
basically, if it's repeatable, you can carry out the same experiment again and you should get similar results each time. So that's your you repeating that experiment. If it's reproducible, that means that maybe somebody else using a similar method, but not exactly the same, would find the same pattern in their data. And if it's a fair test, your, your results should then be repeatable and reproducible. And what this means is that we can then identify some trend within your data. And what we then have is a correlation between maybe your independent variable and your dependent variable. Now by looking after these control variables, we should see a bigger correlation between maybe your independent variable and your dependent variable. But just be aware that just because there's a correlation between two bits of data, doesn't mean there's causation. Now causation means that this thing here causes a change in that. And it's only really by controlling your variables do you have a greater uh, a bit, sort of, a, sort of uh, validity in your results, which means that the independent variable you decided to change affects something else. And if you control all of these other variables that could affect this, you've got a higher um, sort of validity in your experiment. You've got a higher chance of this thing here actually being the thing that controls this. So um, if you don't control your control variables, you undermine the experiment that you're doing. And it's important to make sure that these things are um, identified and you've actually kind of put in, in place some kind of plan to actually think about how you make sure that you have valid data. So control variables, make sure that you can identify them for any experiment that you plan and really think about how you can minimise the effect of certain things changing. So you've got only one thing changing affecting one other result.